Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. Today I'm going to be building a very small ITX PC inside this CIT MTX007B case. It's very similar to the Inwin Chopin. We are going to be using the Gigabyte A520i AC with the Ryzen 5 5600G paired with a 970 EVO plus one terabyte and Corsair Vengeance 3200 MHz DDR4 RAM. And believe it or not, that's all the components we need for this build. So I've already got a separate unboxing video for the motherboard and for the case. I don't want to make this video too long. So I tried to separate things out a little bit. Feel free to check those videos out. They're just quick unboxing and overview of each item. And what I'm going to do is let me just get everything out of the box and we can start building this PC straight away. Okay, I've got all the components here. At least I hope you can see them. We've got SSD, CPU, RAM, and the cooler. So we're not too worried about the cooler right now. I've got rid of the case for now. I hope this light is okay. I'm actually trying a new light. I'm not sure how it's helping or how bad it is with the shadows, but let's get started. So uh, let's start with the CPU. Let's open up the latch, get the CPU out of the packaging. And let's look for the arrow. The arrow is here. And where is it on my motherboard? I believe it's in this corner here. So let's just position that down. Are we in? We are in. Right, that's that done. Let's move on to the SSD, why not? So let's get the screw for the SSD off first. Put this down here. So this is the 970 Evo plus one terabyte. And we're just going to position that down. Oh, get the screw first. And I know my hand's going to be in the way when I'm screwing this in. And I will record the whole thing if I can. So apologies if it gets in the way. But once it's in, there we go. So the Evo plus in. I would recommend using a heat sink if you can. Uh, I'm not going to bother for now just for the sake of the build video. Let's get our RAM in. I think we should be fine with the RAM going in without the cooler being there first. So make sure it's in the right way. So we've got the notches lined up there. So we're gonna have, we're gonna use both the slots. So we get dual channel RAM. Make sure it's the right way around again. How's that? Half a PC built already. Okay, so to install our cooler, let's get rid of the pre-applied brackets. And like I said, I'm really hoping that I don't need to make any modifications after this cooler's in because um, the paste is pre-applied. I don't really want to mess about with it later on, but worst case scenario, I might have to. So let's see what happens. There we go. They're all off. You can see the standoffs are still clearly visible. And what we need to do now is let's make sure that our wire is towards the top like this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So we're going to put it like this, I guess. Okay, to put that cooler in, I think it might be easier if I get the case and just position the motherboard inside first, because obviously that back panel is now loose, right? So maybe I should have put that in first and then removed it. But let's get the back panel, rear IO panel onto the case first. I've right, got that, let's get this out quickly. And let's line this up. I hate these IO panels, but it's gotta be done. Nicely in now, there we go. And now I'm gonna position the board inside. So where's our cooler plate gone? Let's do all of this together so that, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out now. I might have to uh, screw it back in first. Okay, so I've got the board in. Took a bit of fiddling, but move the cables all the way out of the way to make it easier. All the holes look like they're lined up. I haven't screwed them in yet. Um, but you can see now the things are in place, so it'd be easier for me to deal with this. Okay, let me just put the screws into the motherboard and then we can carry on. 
Right, so motherboard screws. Now, before removing these standoffs, I'm just going to place the cooler here and I'm going to show you some interesting investigation work that I've done. And what I found is that with the cooler in this orientation, we have a problem with the grill colliding at the top here. I mean, I know it's much higher right now. And if we turn this around, we get better clearance, but then we have a different problem. The problem here is that the RAM might be in the way if this is on this side. Um, so that is where the problem is going to arise. And we're about, I think maybe half a centimeter to a centimeter off the CPU at the moment. I'm not sure that RAM is going to clear, but let's see how we can get this on. All right, let's remove these standoffs again. I'm not going to bore you with all of it. This time, as you can see, it hasn't fallen down, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. The only thing now, like I said, is worrying about how this is going to get in. So there we go. If we put it this way, the RAM is definitely in the way. Nothing we can do about that. But if we turn it around, of course it will fit. Okay. It's already on now, but it will fit just about with this RAM. And I think ultimately I'm going to have to look for a lower profile cooler. So let me just check this before screwing it down. Let's just see. That definitely is not going to go down, is it? Well, let's just screw it up anyway and see how it looks. Okay, so what I've just decided to do for now, I've removed one stick of RAM so that I can avoid any modifications to this fan for now so that we can at least complete the build. So I'm just going to start by screwing these in one corner at a time and uh, I'll show you what the result looks like. Okay, so I've plugged in the fan connector and the four pin power connector it goes into the first side next to the fan connector, the first four pins. So that makes it easy. I've pushed everything in. I have screwed the cooler down and there is one massive downside. It's still a little too high. So at least our question is answered. It's not the end of the world. Uh, you know, even in this orientation, we just can't get that cover on, right? It's just not gonna happen. It's offset too much to the left-hand side to allow for this to work, right? So it's just not gonna work. Okay, so I've been messing about with this for a while now and might look like, you know, you can see the AMD logo for the fan there. Looks like the case is on. It in fact is on. However, I would not recommend doing what I've done here to make this fit. So if we turn this around to the side, you will see there is a gap. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna come off. What I've basically done is, I've opened the panel up and raised the grill from this corner. Okay, the rest of it is more or less sitting flush. As you can see, uh, it's closed, it's properly closed, it's fully sealed. I haven't put the screws in, but this corner is raised now. I wouldn't recommend doing this. To get that on, I'm just gonna show you what I've had to do. All right, so let's take this cover off. So I've basically pulled away these clips and raised it. And what I've also done, if you can just see here, I've bended this side up, right? And this side here, I've actually bended the metal. Now, the reason I've done that is because I'm, I'm gonna be traveling with this um, and I need to take it with me. So I'm gonna to have to wait to get that low profile cooler. So maybe a Noctua, maybe the thermal right. This is 54 millimeters. The case height clearance is around 42 millimeters. You could get the thermal right XP90, which is a 36 millimeter clearance, or you can go for the Noctua. I think it's the L9 or something. I can't remember the name of it. Basically the 90 millimeter version of the low profile cooler. And some of you may also have noticed I've chained the RAM. So I was using the Corsair Renaissance RAM and you can see the heat sink is actually touching these modules. But for some strange reason, this RGB RAM, though it stands taller, it's a tiny bit thinner than the Corsair Vengeance. So if it's a little bit like there's less play, uh, it doesn't push the RAM stick as much as the Vengeance, which I noticed it was doing. And I've turned the fan around, so I haven't had to remove the entire heat sink. I took off the four screws and turned it around this way so we didn't have to play with this big A and B logo either on this end or on this end. So that's it. The build is essentially complete. I have turned it on, I've played about with it. It seems to be working fine. It's not running at the coolest temperatures in this configuration, but the bottom line is, at least for now, I'm able to get this cover on 
and it kind of works. So it's going to do the job for me for now, right? Um, clearly, like I said, I don't recommend this sort of modification. I would highly recommend trying to uh, get a proper cooler for it and not make a mess like this. So if you have any questions about this, if you're planning to do a similar build, let me know. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section below. Again, as always, thanks for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.